Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday Night Service in the Garage. This is the Edge of Eternity, Bill Cameron. That's me. I'm Bill Cameron, and I'm here to bring you a message tonight from the Bible, something that I hope will encourage you, will strengthen your faith, and want you to have a closer relationship with our God in heaven. Now, before we get into the message, I just want to mention one prayer request to you, and that is for Andy. Andy is a friend of Wayne Reynolds, and I mentioned him last Sunday night in our service as well. And Andy has been suffering with many things. Um, seems to be mostly pancreatic and gallbladder related. He also had COVID, but I believe Wayne said the COVID has now been taken care of. And uh, But he's still in the hospital. He's still being treated. So we want to pray for Daniel. Daniel. That's who the message is about tonight. We want to pray for Andy, uh, that uh, Andy will heal and get back to his uh, normal, healthy self. Let's have a prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. And I just ask that you would be with us tonight in the Sunday night service in the garage as we study about you and learn more about you and hear about this great young prophet named Daniel, who was able to do so many great and wonderful things because of you being his God. And you can do things with us also that will bring glory and honor to your name. So Father, as we delve into this scripture tonight, I just pray that you will help us, teach us, and show us how we can apply it to our own lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everyone. So last week uh, in Daniel chapter 2, same chapter we're in tonight, by the way, grab your Bibles, okay? Daniel is right about there. If you want to look for it, this is the New Testament side. This is the Old Testament side. Daniel's in the back half of the Old Testament. Now, last week we went through uh, part of this chapter as well, and I introduced to you Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were four young Israelites who were taken into exile by the Babylonians. And they were the best of the best. This is what King Nebuchadnezzar demanded. Just get the best of the best and bring them into our kingdom and we'll train them. And then they can serve in our kingdom. And what the king was saying, they can serve me, the king. And so Daniel and, and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went and were taken into this training with the king. Um, the point about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel that I want to get across tonight is this. The reason they were able to do such great things was because of their unshakable faith in the God of heaven, the God that we serve, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God of the Bible. And so I want you to think about their faithfulness and how they would not bend from their faith whatsoever. There was no give and take. It was all God first and everything else after. And they lived this way and God used them in some great and mighty ways. Tonight we're going to see part of that. So let's look at the significance now of Daniel chapter 2 and the dream. Now let me show you really quickly. And by the way, yes, this is my artistic work. It's not the best, but I hope it gets the point across, okay? Daniel went to the king because the king had made some outlandish demands on his uh, royal subjects, I'll call him, his court, those who served him, those who were supposed to be his trusted helpers. And so he had this dream, and none of them could interpret it. Why couldn't they interpret it? Well, number one, they were just simply men. They didn't have God living in them. They didn't have a relationship with God. So they didn't have God's power. But the king's demands were that he wasn't going to tell them the dream. They had to tell him the dream first so that he knew they really knew what they were talking about. And they're telling them, oh, king, no one has ever made a demand like this on anyone. And the king says, well, I have. And if you can't tell me my dream, then I know you would just be trying to trick me into believing something. And if you can't tell me this dream and then interpret it, I'm going to have you cut to pieces and you will be gone. Your houses will be turned into rubble and that'll be the end of you. So you better get this right. 
well, now they're shaking in their boots. They're, they're afraid because of what the king just said and what he demanded. And he know, they know King Nebuchadnezzar is a no-nonsense king. He is demanding and he expects results. So I want to just give you a brief overview of the dream and then we'll get into what the scripture says exactly about it. First of all, Daniel said, well, King, in your dream, you saw this great statue. It had a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet of iron mixed with clay. And he says, now I'm going to interpret this dream for you. And he goes out to tell him uh, all about this dream. Now, these dreams, look this up, it's in history, represent the kingdom of Babylon, the Medes and Persians, which is like um, Iran, Iraq, Syria, ancient Greece, Remember, Alexander the Great was in ancient Greece, um, ancient Rome, and then the restored Roman Empire. This one is developing right now, the restored Roman Empire. And then finally, there is a kingdom coming that's going to crush these empires. They'll be gone forever. And the one that will be in power at the time will be this restored Roman Empire, okay? So this crushing rock that Daniel talks about is none other than Jesus Christ himself, the power of God in man, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our, our coming king. And this king with the kingdom of God will come and crush all of these other empires and everything that's ever been built in the world. And then we are going to live with him for 1,000 years on this earth in something that we call the millennium. Okay, so we're going to be here with Jesus. Jesus will rule over the earth. Those of us who believe will rule with him. And he will be um, leading us in the way that God intended for us to live, and it will be amazing. No more sin. All that stuff is gone. So another thing I wanted to mention about this statue, it shows the process of de-evolution. Now, if you believe in evolution, I, I challenge you to look in the Bible, see what it says about the creation story, uh, there's a, a good friend of mine, and maybe many of yours as well. His name is Steve. His YouTube channel is New Creation in Christ. I'll have it in my description. Go check it out. Look at the things like creation that he talks about, and including things like the stars and the galaxies and all of these things that God created. And he can show you through what he has studied and learned how God has definitely put all of this world, all of these galaxies, all of these universe into place. He's got a great channel, and uh, I, I really want you to go check him out. So this might help you realize that we're not evolving, we're devolving. Look at here. We go from gold to silver to bronze to iron, and then feet mixed with iron and clay. Notice every one of those get less value. A head of gold. I mean, who wouldn't want to have, you know, all kinds of gold, right? And then silver's not bad either, but then bronze, yeah, okay, but then iron and iron mixed with clay, it's impure, and we're going backwards. We're not going up like an evolutionist would tell you. Mankind is degrading, and it's shown in the kingdoms of this earth. Let me read to you quickly Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Grab your Bible. It says this, In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled, and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, astrologers, to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Okay, now he's laying out what he needs from them. 
Then the astrologers answered the king, may the king live forever. <laughs> yeah, they want him to live forever. They want to live forever themselves. Let your, tell your servants a dream and we will interpret it. And the king replied to the astrologers, this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut to pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. Ooh, that puts a little pressure on. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honors. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. That's the requirement. Once more, they said to him, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me a mis something misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then tell me the dream, and then I know you can interpret it for me. So he's really giving them some, uh, a big job, a big job. Now, I also mentioned last week, I think, maybe it was one of my devotions through the week, <clears throat> that um, King Nebuchadnezzar suffered with uh, some form of mental illness. Exactly what that was, I'm not sure. Uh, but we even noticed earlier in the scriptures, uh, when Daniel was talking to him, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and was troubled and could not sleep. And, and we'll see other things that really troubled the king. And some things were just completely out of his control and he would lose his mind. And uh, we'll see that as we continue through the scriptures. So keeping that in mind and this demand in mind, um, the king has made his demands. He's not bending. He's not taking anything for an answer except someone tell him the dream and then interpret it for him. Um, Daniel, you know, the, these other men, these magicians and astrologers and enchanters and all these people with should have had these special powers according to their culture at the time, but they didn't, um, were, were in fear for their lives. But then came Daniel a servant of God, a true servant of God. And um, Daniel wasn't worried about this because he served the true God of heaven. And as I mentioned in the intro earlier, he had faith that would not waver. He knew God was with him no matter what the circumstance, as did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So Daniel came through for the king. And Daniel was not only able to tell the king his dream, which imagine having to know what the dream was, but he was able to interpret it accurately and it all made sense to the king after he heard it. So here's how Daniel learned the dream and how he knew the meaning of it. This is Daniel 2, verses 17 through 23. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as their Babylonian given names became. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Look at where they're turning. All four of them together to God in prayer, trusting him that he will help them. During the night, this mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever, and wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge and discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, you have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. I can imagine he was very excited about this. You know, he he was given a, a job to do, and he did it. And it's actually quite an amazing job that he did. Now, 
Here was the king's response after hearing all of this from Daniel. Okay, here's how the king responded to Daniel after Daniel revealed the dream. Verses 46 and 47 of chapter 2. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him and he made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and raised him in charge of all its wise men. They probably want to know how Daniel could have done that. I wonder if any of them turned to God. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is the dream? You mean, you're telling us all this stuff, but what is the dream? Here, let's look at the dream. Daniel chapter 2, now verse 39, I'm backing up one section to uh, 39 through 45, and Daniel's going to describe the dream to the king, okay? As your majesty was lying there, your mind turned to things to come, and the revealer of mysteries showed you what was going to happen. So Daniel's telling the king that God was trying to show you what's going to come and what's going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty... King Nebuchadnezzar may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. Your majesty looked and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron and the clay, the bronze and the silver and gold were all broken into pieces and became like chaff on the threshing floor of, in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. He's describing the kingdom of God coming like a rock to smash the kingdoms of the world and then set up his own kingdom that will fill the entire earth. That is the millennium that will come after the tribulation. So this is very future events. And uh, here it goes. This was the dream. <clears throat> now we will interpret it to the king. Your majesty, you are the king of kings, the God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory in your hands. He has placed all mankind and beasts of the field and birds of the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them. You are that head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. For iron breaks and smashes everything, and iron breaks things into pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly of iron and partly of clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture. It will not remain united any more than Iron mixes with clay. In the, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. And this is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, and the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. Imagine seeing that dream and not understanding it, not knowing where you fit in, not knowing what this was all about. Yet Daniel 
because God showed him the dream and explained it to him in a vision, was able to reveal this to King Nebuchadnezzar, the demanding king who would accept nothing less than perfection or else. Now, look at these kingdoms. We've studied about them in school. We've heard about them all our lives. We heard of Babylon. Remember the Tower of Babylon? Babylon? The Medes and the Persians, who are now, as I mentioned earlier, Iran and Iraq and Syria and some of these other nations. And then we had the Greek Empire and ancient Rome, which was just horrendous to the Christians and believers. And then the restored Roman Empire. This may be coming together right now. Look at things like the United Nations. Look at Europe. This restored Roman Empire, I believe, is where the Antichrist will come out of during the tribulation. And he is going to make a false peace treaty with Israel. But halfway through that tribulation, he is going to make a false peace treaty with Israel. And during that first three and a half years, he's going to be nice to them, let them have their temple, let them do their sacrifice. But at the middle of that time of that tribulation, he is going to enter into the temple and cause an abomination that causes desolation by doing something unholy at the altar. And he will turn against the Jews. The Jews will have to fight for their lives to remain alive. And it will be a horrendous time. Now, this rock, at the end of that tribulation period, we call it the Battle of Armageddon, is going to come and destroy all the kingdoms of this world, absolutely destroy them. And then the millennium will be ushered in, and we will live with the Lord for 1,000 years, and we will not have to face all of the things that the Jews faced. You know, the tribulation is also called uh, Jacob's trouble. Israel was named after Jacob. And what God told Jacob is he said, from this point on, you will be called Israel. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. This was the line promised from Abraham. And when it got down to Jacob, God made the promise that Israel would come from Jacob and that Jacob would be considered Israel. So many wonderful things in the Bible to learn about history. And it helps us to understand the wars and battles and all of the turmoil that's going on in this earth. I want you to think about the turmoil in your life and what things have come in and crushed it. What things have hurt you tremendously and you feel like I just can't do anything about it. There is a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And he came to seek and to save those who were lost. He is the same one that's going to come and crush the kingdoms of this earth. And we will be with him, those who believe, when he comes back. I want you to consider our relationship with him. It's the only thing that can save you from hell and eternity in hell, separated from God. And there's so many joys to have while we're living here on this earth. He makes everything better. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this book of Daniel. And um, I know when Daniel wrote it, he was told to seal it up until a later time. Well, we're in those later times. And since your son, Jesus, you know, we've been able to read it and study it and, and understand more and more of it. And it becomes clearer and clearer each and every year as we go through this what we think may be the latter days, the end times. And I just thank you for it. But I pray that as we read it and look at it, that everyone will prepare their hearts uh, in their souls to meet you because, Lord, it could be any time. It could be any time. And I want each person who hears this message to be prepared to meet you. Thank you, Father for your love and your kindness and your great power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. I will see you soon.